say volcanolabnets.com. So let's continue from our last video um, with the NHRP. So we completed phase one of the NHRP and we were able to have a spoke, two spoke uh, communication, but the traffic was still going through the hub. So here in this video, we'll look at that um, phase two and three that we will build a direct spoke to spoke tunnel. So here, just where right where we left off with our five routers. Again, just to uh, make sure a trace route from the R4 on the left hand side to the R5 on the right hand side. And you can see it takes some detour routes through R1 and R2 hub. Now, so the next part we're going to do is enable what's called phase two, where we're going to have a direct spoke to spoke tunnels. And what we need to do, but let me, before we do that, let me point out one thing. So if you do a show IP route on R4, and R4 has the route of R5 feedback, but I can see the next top IP points to the hub IP, which is 1.1. .1. Okay. So to make the NHRP build a spoke to spoke tunnel, you have to go to R1, get under the interface, and then you do command no IP next stop self EIGRP one. So what the command essentially does is to tell R2 not to overwrite the next top IP for the route that it's learned from other spoke before it advertised to the remaining spokes. So as soon as you do that and we go back to R4 and do show IP route EIGRP and now the next top IP of the R5 route no longer points to the hub, instead it points to the original router that advertises the route, which is R3 in this case. Okay, so we're going to have to do the exact same thing on R2. Tunnel 2, no IP, next top self, EIGRP1, and we'll wait for EIGRP to refresh. And now R5 has the RAF R4 pointing to R3 also. Okay, so before uh, we initiate another ping test, let's restart our Wireshark. And let's see, ping. Okay, the ping went through, we just saw something happen there in the background, let me stop the capture. Okay, so let's take a look at the capture real quick, we know the ping succeeded. So without these registration requests, we, see, we, we saw a whole bunch of ICMP requests and reply, but in between, we also see an HRP resolution request. So, because R4, R4 needs to talk to R5, and it says the next hop of that is R3, so it's trying to resolve R3, or trying to figure out what's the physical IP of the R3, so it knows exactly how to build the direct Jerry tunnel to it. To it. Because all the information it had before is just the next hop IP of 1.3, so by to um, achieve that, R4 sends out a resolution request, which we have here, and let's take a look. Right here. So it's asking for a dest uh, IP of 1.3, a physical IP, and then you can see it asks the hub 4.1, and then the 4.1, the hub R1 replies back with, let's see where, if we can find that. This is a resolution require, reply rather. Um, 
There you go. So the pub replies back with a client and BMA address of 4.9 and 4.9 is the IP, physical IP of R3. Okay. All right, so now the R4 knows how to reach R3. So it builds the direct GRE tunnel to that. And at the same time, it maintains a mapping. You can see now before we have static, now we have dynamic. So it maintains the physical to logical IP mappings. And that stays in there until the timer expires. So you can see it's counting down right now. We'll come back and look at this for a sec. Let us hop to R5. Actually, the same process happens at R3. So now once the packet hits R3, R3 also needs to figure out how to get to R5. So the same process repeat. And R3 build a direct spoke to spoke to R5. And as you can see right here, it, it's um, figure out the mapping of R5 of the physical, uh, physical to logical. Okay, so now we have a direct spoke to spoke tunnel built between R4 and R3 and R3 to R5. Okay, if you do um, trace route to R5, and now instead of taking four or five hops, it only takes two hops because now R4 can toss directly to R3 and then directly to R5. Okay. So that completes the phase two of the um, NHRP. Now let's move on to phase three. So with phase three, what's the added benefit to the um, NHRP is, if you can imagine if you have like a several thousand spokes that needs to connect to the hub, basically the hub needs to relay or re-advertise every single route that's being learned from the spoke to the other spokes. It would be nice if you can summarize those routes. Well, given that your spoke subnet um, has the uses the IP scheme that's summarizable, so the R1 or the hub can easily summarize that and just re-advertise one uh, summary routes to the other spoke instead of thousands and thousands of routes. But as soon as you do that, the next top IP of the route will be reset to the hub IPs. So what phase three of the NHRP resolve is to allow you to build a spoke to spoke tunnel, even though the next top IP is still show up as the hub IPs. And the way to do that is by the method called redirect. So we'll see here. Let's um, let's do exactly just that. So on the R1 side, we're gonna come up with the summary routes. So let's take one quick look before we do that on the R4. Okay, still point to R3. So we're gonna, now we're gonna try to summarize the dot fifty five subnet and. If you do a quick calculation, we can use 122.16.48.0 to and that should cover 55. Then enter. Okay. And we'll come back on R4 
and then step 55 shows us 48 and the next top IP is reset back to the hub IPs so if you do a trace route right now you can see it traverses the hub and in R3 and then now we still have R3 direct tunnel to R5 but we we'll just let's ignore that for now we we'll just concentrate on our um, NHRP ID one or cloud one here okay now to turn on phase 3 of the NHRP it's actually pretty simple so on the hub side requires given the hub that doesn't need to send the or have any subnet attached to it we can just do IP NHRP redirect so for all the resolution requests received from the spoke it's just going to refer it directly to the destination spoke which we will see in a sec and on R4 which is a sport, spoke um, IP and HRP redirect yeah, and you also need one additional command which is called shortcut and I'll explain in a second what shortcut does we just copy those and put that on tunnel 1 again we're just going to leave the tunnel 2 side of the network um, intact and just use the phase 2 and the HRP okay now all those in place let me show you with show IP seft 172.16.55.1 so you can see in the Ceph table here for our four to reach 172.16.48 subnet it clearly points to the next top of the hub IP which is 1.1 .1. okay what the shortcut does you see in the second here is it will just tell the route to bypass using that entry totally and in instead use whatever mapping shows up on the HSRP so to see that let's Again, we start our Wireshark. Okay. Here we're going to ping 172.16.55. Actually, let's do a trace this time. Just do a trace. Okay. Uh, let's see what's happening here. Okay, and then all right. So I do a trace twice. That's fine. We'll look at the difference in a second. And let me stop the capture. Let's look for our uh, resolution request. Here you go. So just like before, R four tries to resolve the IP of. A physical IP of R3 and here it sends to, to the hub the resolution request but you can see here instead of getting a reply from the hub you're actually getting a reply from the R3 itself so in the sense the request was redirected to R3 and R3 is the one that's actually reply to back to R4 okay And here, the reason I did the trace route um, twice, so you can see it different. The first time it traverses through the hub, just 1.1, and once the direct tunnel is built, it actually goes directly to R3, 1.3. Okay. Now let's take a look at the different on the IP and HRP. And here's the additional entry that was created during those whole process. 172.16.55 is now created in the just RP table and it says to get to that subnet you need to go to 1.3 and because we finished the resolution we got the 4.9 that's the physical address and that's how it gets or it's, it knows how to send the 
pack it directly to R3. But if you check the Ceph table, although the Ceph table still said you're supposed to go to 1.1, .1, but because we have that shortcut command in there, let's totally ignore that and then just use what it shows up here. Okay, so you can see now, even with the summary routes that we receive from the hub, the spoke still knows how to build a direct tunnel to the other spoke. So here when you design your network, when you use NHRP, or this is also applicable to DMVPN, make sure your spoke subnet can be easily summarized to get this, or so you can exploit this features on the phase three and HRP. There's actually another um, feature or a benefit of using phase three, which has got to do with hierarchical design, where you can have two different region. So you can, in US, you can have like an East Coast and a West Coast type network, and, you, and then you can build like another, a layer two um, hierarchical or NHRP. So basically R1 and R2 can talk to a third router up here and then exchange the route between the cloud and you can still build a direct spoke to spoke tunnel across the region. And you'll look at that in the DMVPN phase three video. So that should be it for our NHRP phase two, phase three video. Thank you for watching labminutes.com. I'll see you guys next time.